Greetings, folks. This is Douglas Smythe from HowToGrowMustache.com, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, the Mustache and Blade Podcast, the Cutting Edge Podcast, and the Wet Shaders Roundtable. I think that's all of it. I'm coming here today, coming at you today to try to, well, not even try, to show you how to wet shave. I'm guessing this is your first time hearing about wet shaving. You want to learn a little bit, little bit more. Now, there's loads of videos out there that will give you a really thorough introduction on wet shaving. I just want to teach you the basic principles of wet shaving. Um, just to get you up and going and on your way. First of all, this is a safety razor. Now there's a lot, of, well, there's loads of different safety razors out there. This looks like a vintage one. In fact, you can find loads of vintage ones uh, on eBay and um, other sites for sale. And they sometimes they're a really good deal. And uh, plus they're beautiful. They're you know not only they're antiques to collect, they're you know they're functional, so form and function. So if you can pick up a vintage one. By all means do, but don't spend over 20 or 25 bucks if you're just starting out. This, again, is a modern safety razor based on a vintage safety razor. Uh, this is by my company, Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, and this is called the Double Open Comb. The Phoenix Double Open Comb. The reason why it's called the Double Open Comb is because it comes on the bottom and comes on the top cap. Typically, an open comb would just be combs on the bottom. But again, there's more, more information and videos out there explaining more about these concepts. We're just going to do some shaving. So, this is your typical three-piece safety razor. To load the blade, you would unscrew the cap, and this is what you get. So your top cap, bottom cap, handle. A blade looks like this. Now this razor looks a lot more aggressive than what it actually is. It's actually a very, very low aggressive razor, gentle razor, perfect for the newbie. So don't let those teeth scare you off. This is a double-edged blade. It's a lot different than the cartridge razor you're, you're used to. Very sharp when handling it. I try to get behind the blade. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So it's a D blade, double edge. Both sides contain the blade. Now we're loading up the three-piece double-edged razor. You just put it over the center bolt like that. Bottom cap. Handle. Just screw that on. And once it's, a, it's grabbing on a little, lift it up, grab the sides. Be sure always to grab it by the sides, the non sharp sides, and tighten it. Tighten it almost too tight. And then give it a little twist back. You want it to be able to breathe that blade. Okay, so that is your typical three piece how to load the blade. And this is a classic Gillette red tip. This is vintage, this is from 1955. This is the Butterfly razor. It's kind of dusty, it's been sitting around. But um, this one is a lot easier to load, obviously. You just drop the blade right in on top. So this is called Twist Open, TTO, or Butterfly. It has the silo doors. That's the difference. Shave-wise, this is a little more aggressive, believe it or not. But uh, also provides a great shape, also a great starter razor for a newbie. So if you're looking for a vintage uh, razor to jump in on, go for a Gillette Red Tip. That's my recommendation anyways. YMMV, <laughs> which is something you should probably learn too. That stands for Your Miles May Vary. The beautiful thing about wet shaving and why a lot of us gravitate towards it is because unlike the cartridge razor, it's not that one size fits all assembly line type of shaving. You can actually customize the shave to your skin, to your face. There are thousands of different double-edged blades out there. In this pack, I have about you know, four or five different brands, uh, and there's thousands. There's you know hundreds of different razors, loads of different soaps. Uh, there's just so many different things for everybody out there. So some things will work for you, some things will work for others and not work for you. <laughs> so it's all about experimenting, and that's what makes this fun. And that's kind of what breathes life back into this hobby, if you will. No longer is it just shaving. It's kind of something you can really get into. Um, very soothing. It's like time for yourself. And uh, it's just uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and I encourage you all to give it a go. So back to the shave. <laughs> it's tough for me to do a short video without rambling. Today I'm going to be using Crown King. Coke and Butter Shave Soap. This is Rustler's Ridge. It's prickly pear, cedar, spruce, and sage. Now you can't get that with typical gel or goo in a can shaving soaps. They all smell the same after a while. This is a very unique scent. And there's the puck. And what you would do is, again, for those of you who've been using goo in a can for a while, 
This is why we call it wet shaving. You know, typically at a party, you'll be talking to some guy and be like, yeah, I'm into wet shaving, yada, yada. He'll nod in agreement, like, oh, yeah, me too. But he's just nodding in agreement because he doesn't really know what you're talking about. And he just assumes you're talking about, you know, regular shaving because water is involved. So that's obviously wet shaving. It's a little different. The term, I'm guessing, comes from using a brush on the soap. And that is more to differentiate nowadays because back in the day, it was just called shaving. But now, if you hear, we probably should have called it traditional shaving, but they call it wet shaving, and so we're going to go with that. This is a synthetic brush. You can also find brushes in um, badger, boar, horse, a few other hairs. Uh, synthetic and badger and boar are probably the most popular ones right now. Actually, synthetics are really you know uh, blowing up right now in the forums and whatnot because, uh, well, sustainability-wise. Those animals aren't going to last forever. Synthetics will, and the synthetic brushes are getting better and better. This is my own Crown King brush. This line's coming up very soon. By the time this video is out, you'll probably see the site. <laughs> CrownKingWetShaving.com But that's my little uh, blatant <laughs> promotion right there. Okay, so soap is dry. What I do, typically before I begin lathering the soap, is I hop in the shower. Uh, this preps your face, hydrates the hairs. The hair, when hydrated, is, is one-third less strong than when dry. When dry, it's only... I think it's a third, it's, it's half. It's a half when it's dry. So if you're hitting it with a, uh, an electric razor or whatnot, you get more bang for your buck if your face is properly prepped. So you prep in the shower. Take a hot shower. While you're in the hot shower, you will be, again, back to your soap, blooming this. What is blooming? Blooming is like either filling this up with hot water and letting the soap sit in hot water. This raises up the essential oils, uh, also preps the soap, softens it. Uh, another way to bloom is you can just put the lid back on and submerge the entire soap with no water in it inside the sink. It's all about heating up the essential oils, really, blooming the scent. It adds to the experience, trust me. <laughs> While you're in the shower, you will clean your face with, well, these are two of my recommendations. This is Dr. Squatch, Bay Rum, great face cleaner, great all around body soap too. But scrub your face really well with this, or another one is a scentless pre-shave soap by Phoenix Iris and Accoutrements. Uh, this is mine. Uh, what my, a little, what's a little different about mine is it also is a lather booster. So no matter what shave soap you use after this, this will add lather to it. And I'll explain that in a second. So you're washing your face in the shower, prepping your face for the shave, hydrating those hairs, and uh, degreasing for the most part. You can rub the pop directly on your face and work it with your fingers, or just work it with your fingers. And as you would any other time in the shower, if you're done washing your face with soap, you rinse. Okay, once your face is rinsed, you're, it's time to start shaving. I myself am a shower shaver, but a lot of guys enjoy shaving by the sink. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, in the meantime, your soap has been blooming for five minutes, five or 10 minutes, how long, however long it took you to take a shower. Now, not only, I might mention, does pre-shave prep your face for the shave, it also preps the pre-shave soap. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is it softens this too. It's usually a hard puck. Because before you apply the lather with a brush to your face, you want to pick up your puck again and apply it against the grain. Against the pattern of growth of hair on your face. This gets under the little hairs and lifts them up a little. Gives more uh, surface area for the, the razor to really bite onto when you're shaving. And again, mine is a lather boost too. Um, this one happens to be <laughs> a mentholated bar, so there's menthol in it. So this will make any shapes up I use on top of it, a methylated shave soap, which is also really cool. So it's cooling, and it's also building, adding to the lather. So if you use a, a crappy shave soap, this will actually make it a little bit better. <laughs> so, that said, brush. Now with synthetic brushes, you can use them dry on a wet puck, or wet them first. I tend to wet them, it's just what I'm used to, it works for me. So, it's a little wet, it's heavy with water, get a good shake. Puck, I've emptied out all the bloom water. Some people take the bloom water and rub it on their face. It's not my thing. <laughs> but they use that instead of pre-shave soap. They want to get more out of their soap. 
Now, again, it's not like your typical foamy lab that comes out of a can, because that stuff's loaded with air, which is not necessarily a good thing. In fact, it doesn't make total contact with your skin because there's air pockets in there. Shaving soap with a brush, not only does it exfoliate your skin as you're applying it, lifting off dead skin cells and whatnot, it also makes direct contact with the skin. Now you can apply it a couple different ways. Like plaster, like this, which feels weird at first if you're used to using goo out of a can, or that fo shaving foam, but you're used to that big foamy goodness and like that's just, it's more psychology than actually effective to the shade. It's loaded with all types of crap that you don't really want on your face. And they seem to actually erode your blades faster too. So I don't know if that's by design, but we're on to you guys. So this is how I and a lot of straight razor shavers like to use lather, like a plaster. I find it's more coating, more glide, more shielding to, for my skin. Uh, other guys will add a little bit more water, which we'll do right now, and build up more of a lather. And again, this is really whatever works for you. So in the beginning, this is going to take you a little while. It's going to take you probably half an hour or more to shave in the morning, so prepare for that. But I have to say, once you get good at it and start doing this on a regular basis, you can cut it down to like 10 minutes. I know it's hard to believe now, but just like anything else, the more you do it, the faster you get at it, the more practice you become. But once you get fast at it, you're going to want to slow it down because it feels so good. Okay, so now we've just applied a lather. Again, this is more the way I apply it, which is like plaster. I've already shaved today, so I'm not really going to shave right now take that blade out. But so that is some Crown King on the buck. Okay, I like to soak the blade or wet the blade before I apply it to my face. And if this is your first time wet shaving, just gently apply it to your face and pull down slightly and try to find where it grabs, where you can feel the blade grabbing the hair. Like right there, like around 90 degrees. Might be different for you. Everyone's faces are shaped differently. But yeah, and then it's like mowing the lawn. Now with this particular blade, see how I flipped it? That's a good thing about double edge. With this particular blade, it's a double open comb. So it's leaving these little lines. You get more lather. So I can actually do a couple passes in one place. Typically, you can only do one pass. Lifting up the mustache. So this is going down with the grain. We call it with the grain, but it may not necessarily be with the grain. Again, it's always important to track the growth pattern of how your hair grows so you know which way you're shaving. Because it's not about taking off all the hair in the first pass. It's about hair reduction. So we're gonna do more than one pass. I typically do four passes going in different directions. But again, your miles may vary. Most guys do two or three. Okay. So that was a downward pass. At this point, I can rinse my face. or leave on what's there and do another pass. But I'm going to rinse it because most blades, most razors don't act like this one. So I don't know why I'm using it to teach you how to shave, but <laughs> that's not true. Uh, okay, so that was pass one. Now we're going to do pass two, but first we'll be apply some lather. Now this brush, I didn't rinse off when I was done lathering the first time. I put it aside because there's still lather in here. And all you have to do is reapply it to your face. <laughs> and if you need to, add just a few drops of water to this. Very little water just to rehydrate it. You should be able to get out of a good soap, a good artisan handmade soap, 
probably, uh, well, five passes, six passes, eight passes, sometimes worth of soap. Not that you're gonna do that many passes, but these are serious lather producers. And I don't know if you can see how shiny that is, but it's loaded with butter, this particular formulation. Okay. So, time for second pass. For my second pass, I'm gonna go across the grain, starting at my uh, soul patch here. Don't rush this. I'm going a little bit faster because I've been doing this for years. Now, someday, if you want, you can learn how to switch and shave with your left hand just for balance. Or you can just continue to do it with your right hand. For the neck, I didn't explain this on the first pass, but there's a couple ways of hitting that. And since I'm doing four passes, I can use each technique. One technique is the what's up. And the what's up is just looking up oh, so much so I can still see in the mirror just to make the skin on my neck taut. So I can really get in there. And another technique is the bullfrog. You kind of like puff out your neck, slide your head back, this will give you more surface area also to get in there. So I, I use both techniques quite a lot because the neck can be difficult for me and a lot of guys. A lot of nooks and crannies. Now again, because of the, blit, the razor I'm using, I can do two passes in one because there's still lotion or rather soap there. Typically there wouldn't be. I'm not going to rinse this time, I'm just going to lather on top of this, so this will be my third pass, for time's sake. Now if you wanted to really blow this up, you could add more water and really hit it about a minute or two and it will blow up, like this. <laughs> That's really slick stuff. And uh, so it has the potential to do that. I find this more protective, so I'll continue to do it this way. Experiment. Each soap, again, reacts differently too. You have to kind of learn each new soap you get, how it works, how it lathers, so on and so forth. For this pass, I'm going to use the Gillette Red Tip. So you know what? I'm gonna put the blades in there. We're gonna do one, one pass with the blade, just so you can see. So now I did down for my first pass. I did across the grain for my second pass. Now we're gonna do across the grain again, starting my sideburns. Now, another good thing to pay attention to, which I forgot to mention because I left the blade out last time, is the audio feedback. You can actually hear the blade. Cutting. And you want to hear that. As a shower shaver, it's kind of difficult. I turn the water off so I can hear that. And in fact, it's magnified because of the natural echo chamber quality of a shower. So, something to listen to, something, something to pay attention to as well when you're first starting out. So you know your angle's correct. Some guys like to listen to music, however, and they, you know, they're experienced. They've already, they know what they're doing. It's all muscle memory at that point. Speed this up. Okay. See, that was kind of a look, a what's up into bullfrog. It's almost like yoga poses. <laughs> okay, so that's my third pass, and for most of you, that would be your final pass, but I do it against the green pass. I know. They've always told you that was bad. It's not necessarily bad. And again, I'm saying that with quotes because when it comes to against the grain, 
I pretty much already just did that. And I'll explain in a minute why. Now I'm actually going to apply the lather in the direction I'll be shaving too to lift up whatever little hairs are there on a tiny microscopic level that may have some effect. It may also be just superstition, but I always try to lather in the direction I'm already about to be shaving in. So, why I say it's not necessarily against the grain, the direction I'll now be going, is because, again, our grain patterns grow in our grain, the hair on our face grows in different directions for all of us. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Beards especially, they can be spirally, all the place. So, mine grows this way. So that third pass I did was actually against the grain. So now I'm just calling this against the grain, but it's actually just an upstroke for me. And, you know, some of you who cartridge shave may not be used to uh, doing more than one pass. I only, I only did ever one pass when I was a cartridge shaver. It took me a while to realize, again, that you're not taking off all the hair in just one pass. you got to constantly remind yourself it's about hair reduction. Anything that takes off the hair in one foul swoop, <laughs> I don't know if I want to touch it to my face. And you're probably asking yourself, why do you want to go through all this trouble? Well, it's a better shave, first off. <laughs> Second, it's better for your skin. Anytime you drag a blade across your face, you're taking off skin, a layer of skin. So if you're dragging a multi-cartridge, which are now like, I don't know, six blades, seven blades, just one pass is taking off six or seven layers of skin, or something close to that. A double edge, it's just one blade. So with four passes, I've only dragged over that one blade over my face four times. Maybe less for you. So it's another thing to consider. Then there's the, the price factor. These blades cost probably pennies. Actually, no, definitely pennies. The most expensive one probably cost 24, 28 cents that I found. Where cartridge razors, what are they, five bucks a piece now? It's 20 bucks for a four pack. Uh, and then if you go to one of those special clubs, it's like $9 or something for a four-pack a month. You can get a hundred-pack of double-edged blades for, I mean, the cheapest are like six bucks for a hundred to fifteen, twenty-five, you know, as much as you want to spend. The quality does go up on these blades, but they are cheap. <laughs> and when you're done shaving, you can actually take this blade, throw it out. Not throw it out, put it in a blade bank. More on that in another video. And, uh... Yeah, change your blade after every shave. That's better for your skin too. Uh, typically I use one blade for about three shaves and then it's gone. And so that was hopefully your first wet shave. Now we rinse. Now back in the day, that might have been it for you. You just shaved, you were good to go. Just rinse your face, splash on some cold water, and you're out the door. Well, that's got to change. <laughs> Not only is that stepping out in the middle of the job, it's also missing out on a lot of fun. Aftershaves, colognes, bombs, there's so much you can try. Uh, another one especially great for a noob is an alum block. It's potassium alum, or alum, as you'll hear other people pronounce it. Um, this is an astringent block. It's also a teacher. <laughs> I wrap mine with an elastic band because it can get slippery, so this gives me some grip. But you wet this block, and what I mean by teacher is if you're new and you're working on your technique, or maybe you have a new razor or blade you're trying, this will tell you if you did a good job or not because it'll sting. Or it'll feel really cool and great like it does now. Yeah. So if my technique is a little off, it'd be a little bit of sting, but not bad. Again, it's astringent. It's an aftershave. It's a classic barber's aftershave, the alum block. So some people will rinse that off because it does dry. It's also great for acne, I might add, for men and women. If you suffer from acne, an alum block could be your uh, way or your cure. Um, but again, for others, it dries out their skin if they leave it on. So after you, you know, after a minute, you can rinse that off, pat your face dry, and then apply <laughs> some aftershave. This one is an aftershave cologne. 
again by Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements, my company. Uh, this is well, this is based on the Wild West tombstone, in fact. But again, I can Google that that story. I think this is good. So, some uh, bottles will have a, an orifice reducer, so you can just splash away without worry. Mine typically does. I don't know why I don't have one in this one today. But uh, if it doesn't, if it's just an open bottle, put your thumb there. This one is mentholated. There's menthol in this and a loom. So it's like really tingly and cooling. And if I was to step outside right now and the wind was blowing, it's just like your skin just comes alive. It's great. This not only is this loaded with, you know, not only does it contain uh, alcohol, which is also sterilized and great for the skin. It kills anything that's on there, it was on the blade. Uh, it also has a lot of skin food in it. Uh, this particular one contains aloe and rose water. Both wonderful, wonderful ingredients for the skin. And uh, so I would look for um, apple shaped splashes that also contain skin food that aren't just straight up alcohol. That can be very drying and not really something you want to put on freshly shaven skin. So make sure there's water in it and skin food. Um, I think that's it. Guys, that was a wet shave. Now there's a lot more to it than that if you want to go that route, but that's a simple basic shave that we just did. And I hope that was helpful for you. I hope I didn't leave out anything. No, well, I guess I. I did. <laughs> when you're done with the shave, it's good to rinse off the razor you just used. Some people go as far as keeping a bottle of, or a, a jar of isopropyl alcohol in their bathroom or shave station and dip it in that to sterilize it and then shake it off. And with the introduction of alcohol, the isopropyl, it'll bond with the water and evaporate faster. So you're not going to need any rust or anything like that. So that's a great thing to do. I keep a bottle, a nice purple spray bottle of ice purple uh, alcohol, and I spray it with that. And I shake it off and put it down to dry. Um, and I think that is it for now, folks. Although I might want to mention a styptic pencil. If you're new to shaving, this could be your best friend too. This will stop the blood immediately. If you have a little weeper, is what we call them. I don't have any. If I were to, though, you would wet this and just touch it to it and it seals it up instantly. This is also made out of uh, potassium aluminum. Uh, it's just a higher concentrate. And this, again, awesome stuff. If you're a chef or a cook, great to have in your station too, because if you get a cut, seals it right up. Um, so stick it pencil. Keep that in mind too when you're shopping for your new wet shaving kit. So that's wet shaving, folks. It's easy. Just give it a go. If you have any questions or concerns, contact me through my website right here. <laughs> at howtogrowamustache.com or you can contact me at phoenixartistsandaccoutrements.com actually yeah that's a good place to find me uh, I'd like to thank um, the boys AJ at uh, Dr. Squash uh, Dr. Squash is a really up and coming a really interesting up and coming soap for guys uh, I'm a huge fan Marty Pape's a huge fan for those of you who know him um, so look for more from them and so uh, thank you AJ for pushing me to do this video for the noobs and it's been a lot of fun. I'll catch you guys later. Shave on.